Maybe you've been at church and you've noticed the different color banners at the front of the church change week to week. You might see the color of the stole on the pastor change colors too. One week it might be white and the next week it might be green. So what do these colors mean? Well, we're going to talk about all that and more as we explore the liturgical colors for the Christian year. So join us on this colorful episode of the Methodical Methodist Podcast. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Methodical Methodist Podcast. I'm your host, the Reverend Andrew Lay, and if you like the show, I hope that you might take a minute to subscribe, rate, and write a review for the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you listen to it, because it helps to boost the show and make it to where more people can find it. You can also find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash methodicalpod, and you can find me on Instagram as well, at Methodical Pod. So be sure to check me out. I want to announce that I have written an Advent book entitled Hope for the Holidays, Exploring the Message of Hope in the Christmas Story. The book talks about how hope is vital to all of our lives, and it's often most prevalent during the season of Christmas. So my book speaks about the message of hope that we find in the Christmas story as we celebrate Jesus' birth. In the book, I explore the ways that we can experience hope for the holidays, as each chapter looks at different characters in the Christmas story and how they offer a message of hope to us in our own lives. Hope for the Holidays is now available on Amazon, and if you live in Athens, Tennessee, you can also pick it up at White Street Market. So I'd love for you to check it out and leave a review. The Christian calendar consists of a cycle of of liturgical seasons, and each of these seasons correspond with different liturgical colors. Now, I know that was a lot of words in that sentence, (laughs) but let's start with the word liturgy. It literally means the work of the people. So liturgy is really just a fancy word that we use that means public worship. But before we dive into liturgical seasons, First, I want to talk a little bit about the lectionary. Okay, so stick with me. As Methodists, we follow the schedule of the Revised Common Lectionary. Now, the the Revised Common Lectionary is a calendar of suggested scripture readings that go through a three-year cycle. For example, it's broken down into year A, year B, and year C, and you'll typically have a scripture reading from the Old Testament, a psalm, a New Testament letter, and a gospel reading. And a lot of times, we pastors will choose one of these uh, readings to preach on during Sunday morning worship. It's a, a systematic approach to using Scripture in worship. But it's important to know that the lectionary does not cover the entirety of the Bible. To be fair, it covers a lot, but it's not exhaustive. It leaves out... Uh, portions of scripture. And so the lectionary, it's not necessary. It's not uh, something that we have to have, but it is simply a guide. It's very helpful. We use it a lot, but it, but it's not something that's required of us to use. But we do find in the lectionary, um, it, it helps us go through these cycles. It's very, very helpful for this tool. And so sometimes pastors will preach straight from the lectionary, and they only preach from the lectionary. Other times pastors will kind of mix in sermon series and then do a little bit of lectionary. Um, Some people just do sermon series, and they don't even look at the lectionary. Um, Some people will use sermon series that are based on the lectionary. So so there's a number of different ways to do this. But whether you are preaching straight from the lectionary or preaching on a sermon series, I think the lectionary is extremely helpful simply because the lectionary follows the basic outline of the Christian year. 
And the Christian year has two cycles. It has the Christmas cycle, which includes Advent, Christmas, and Epiphany. And then it has the Easter cycle, which includes Lent, Easter, and Pentecost. Now, both of these cycles begin with a season of preparation. And those seasons are Advent in the Christmas cycle, and then Lent in the Easter cycle. And then we move to a season of celebration. This is Christmas and Epiphany in the Christmas cycle, and this is Easter and Pentecost in the Easter cycle. So it, it basically follows the life journey of Christ, the, the life, the death, the birth, uh, the resurrection of Jesus. And so half of the calendar tells the story of Jesus. Half of the calendar has these two cycles, the Christmas cycle and the Easter cycle. But then we also have seasons of what we call ordinary time. And ordinary time's time uh, makes up the other half of the calendar. And this time helps to tell the story of God's people. So we have half of it telling the story of Christ, and then the other half tells the story of God's people. So that is a basic overview, but let's take these seasons one at a time. The church calendar begins with the season of Advent. The word Advent comes from the Latin word Adventus, which means arrival or coming. This is the season where we are waiting and preparing for the arrival of Christ. During Advent, we prepare for Christ's coming as a child at Christmas. But Advent is also a time for us to prepare for Christ's second coming. It's a season of preparation and expectation. Advent begins four Sundays before Christmas. The first Sunday takes place on the Sunday closest to November the 30th, and it ends on Christmas Eve, December 24th. Each Sunday during Advent is often marked with the lighting of the four Advent candles on the Advent wreath. Sometimes these candles will have the themes hope, faith, joy, and love. And all of these candles are purple or blue, with the exception of the third candle, which is pink or rose-colored. The third Sunday of Advent is known as Gaudete Sunday, which in Latin means rejoice, spelled G-A-U-D-E-T-E. And so the pink or rose color is a representation of joy. And then we also have a fifth candle in the center of the Advent wreath, which is a white candle. It's typically the, the largest of all of the candles, and it is called the Christ candle. And we usually light that candle during the Christmas Eve service. You can also light it on Christmas Day as well. Now, traditionally, we either use purple or blue pyramids, uh, which is kind of a fancy word for banners. And these are, are tapestries that hang down from the pulpit, and they're draped over the communion table. We also have these things called stoles that are draped uh, around the pastor's neck, hang down kind of like a large scarf, and typically they will be blue or purple as well. And, and purple is used because it's a symbol of both penitence and royalty. So it's an appropriate color as we prepare for the coming of Christ. First of all, we believe that Jesus is royal. He is the Son of God. And that we also believe that Advent is a time of preparation. It's a time for us to look at our hearts, to repent, to turn to God, to prepare for Christ's coming. Then we move from the season of Advent to the Christmas season or Christmas tide. And the traditional 12 days of Christmas begin on the evening of Christmas Eve and continues to the Feast of Epiphany. The first Sunday in the season of Epiphany is the Baptism of the Lord Sunday. And during Christmas tide, we use white or gold pyramids. White and gold are symbols of joy and celebration. White is typically reserved for high church Sundays, Sundays that are especially important. White can also be used for weddings, baptisms, and celebrations of life. And after that, we move to the season after 
Epiphany, which is a season of ordinary time. We actually have two times during our liturgical year that is considered to be ordinary time. And the word ordinary, in this sense, does not mean boring, um, or, or, or the way we would think of the word ordinary. It actually comes from the same root as the word ordinal. So it's a season where Sundays are numbered, counted. The fifth Sunday after Epiphany, the sixth Sunday after Epiphany. So this first stretch of ordinary time begins on the Sunday after Baptism of the Lord Sunday and extends to what we call Transfiguration Sunday, which leads us up to Ash Wednesday. And Ash Wednesday marks the beginning of Lent. That's what we're going to talk about here in just a second. But during ordinary time, we use green pyramids. And green is a symbol of growth. Obviously, we can think of trees and vegetation, but green represents this idea really of Christian growth. And so from from that first season of ordinary time, starting right after, or really right on Ash Wednesday, we move to the season of Lent. And this season is, is very similar to the season of Advent in the sense that it is a time of preparation. Lent is a season of 40 days, excluding Sundays, that begin on Ash Wednesday and help prepare us for the coming of Easter. Traditionally, uh, Christians around the world participate in the season of Lent by fasting from something in order to share in their sacrifice of Jesus Christ. And Lent is an opportunity also to take on something, to take on prayer and study, to grow closer to Christ in preparation for Easter. And during Lent, we recall when Jesus went out into the wilderness, fasted for 40 days, and was tempted by Satan. And oftentimes, the word hallelujah will be omitted from worship during this season. We don't sing hymns or read prayers with hallelujah in them during this time. Because it's a time of repentance, it's a time of preparation. And so again, we use the color purple, which represents penitence and royalty. And this season leads us through Holy Week all the way up right before Easter. So, so from Lent, we move on to the season of Easter tide. And this season is similar to Christmas tide. It's a season of celebration. As Christmas marks the coming of Christ at his birth and the anticipation of Christ's second coming, Easter marks the resurrection of Christ. Easter tide begins at Easter and extends up until the day of Pentecost. The season of Easter tide is celebrated with white or gold because it is such an important season in the church year. Now, Pentecost is technically within the season of Eastertide, but Pentecost is a special Sunday in the Christian calendar. Pentecost is the 50th and last day of the Easter season. This day marks the coming of the Holy Spirit upon the apostles in Acts chapter 2. The Spirit came down like fire, and so the color used for this Sunday is the color red, because red symbolizes the fire of the Holy Spirit. It also is the color of blood, as we remember the blood of Christ. And typically, since red is such an intense color, it's only used occasionally rather than throughout a whole season. So it's really used sparingly. Uh, it can be used for special Sundays like ordinations and anniversaries and homecomings, special days like Martin Luther King Jr. Day or Memorial Day. And, and so then after this time, we move back into another season of ordinary time. And this time, this ordinary time is marked as the season after Pentecost. So we have, you know, the, the third Sunday after Pentecost, the fourth Sunday after Pentecost. And this goes on for several weeks, starting on Trinity Sunday, and it can be anywhere between May 29th and June 4th, and it goes up until All Saints Day, which is on the first Sunday in November. And during this time, again, the color green is used, again, signifying the importance of growth. I've also seen um, some folks use the color red throughout this season, since it's considered the season after Pentecost, but typically folks will use green during this time. 
And then in the midst of ordinary time, we celebrate all sorts of, of Sundays, um, like All Saints Day, which is a Sunday where we have white pyramids. We also celebrate Christ the King Sunday, which again um, has white pyramids. And then right after that Sunday, we make our way all the way back to the season of Advent. And the whole cycle starts all over again. So that is, in a nutshell, the liturgical year. In the church, we go through this cycle. We go through these patterns, and it helps us orient our lives in accordance to Christian disciplines. Some seasons are meant to be times of preparation and repentance. Some seasons are meant to be times of celebration. Some seasons are meant to be times of growth. And so I hope that this episode has enriched your understanding of worship and the Christian calendar. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Methodical Methodist Podcast. If you have enjoyed this show, I hope you might consider heading on over to iTunes to subscribe, rate, and leave a review of the show. It is very much appreciated. And until next time, stay methodical.